a game played on school playgrounds without any adult supervision. Kids would turn cafeterias into casinos and even steal from each other. While students considered it a fun pastime, adults considered it gambling. This led to it being banned until it was revived once again in the Netflix hit series, Squid Game. Today, many recognize the game as Dakchi Chigi, but in the 90s, it was known as Pogs. This is the rise and fall of Pogs. The story behind Pogs involves a game that might look familiar to fans of a show called Squid Game. Known as Dakji Chigi, the game involves light, colorful pieces of paper. It shares its name with how it's played. Dakji refers to a game piece folded out of paper, and Chigi means to hit. Likewise, the rules seen in Squid Game involves two players deciding who goes first with a round of rock, paper, scissors. The one who loses has to put their dakji on the ground, while the other player throws their dakji at it and tries to flip it. If they fail, players take turns to try and hit each other's dakji. The first player to succeed wins and gets to take the dakji. But like many gamesmanship, there's more than one set of rules. There is one where players try to throw their dakji the furthest, another where players throw their dakji at a wall and have it bounce back the furthest, and one where players draw a circle and try to push each other's dakji out. Dakji Chigi became popular amongst kids who would gather in yards or empty lots to play games. Not only did they have dakji that they made themselves, but stationery stores also sold round dakji, often with popular cartoon characters drawn on them. With such low barrier to entry, the game became more and more popular, and kids grew obsessed with playing and collecting dakji. Some kids in North Korea even committed crimes against the state by tearing out pages of government-issued manifestos to make dakji. But as time went on and the value of paper fell, paper dakji became less popular, with plastic and metal dakji taking their place, resembling a different game even more. Menko Attributed as the ancestor of dakji chigi, Menko is a traditional Japanese game similar in nature. While dakji chigi was played with light pieces of paper, Menko used wooden, clay, or ceramic pieces and later thick paper cards. Players would put their cards on a table, then try to flip them by throwing another card. Any pieces that players flipped, they got to keep. Centuries later, Japanese immigrants brought Menko to Hawaii. There, kids played the game using caps from milk and juice bottles from Halea Kala dairy products. Coincidentally, they were roughly the same size as the wooden, clay, and ceramic pieces used in the past, making them the perfect replacement. In Hawaii, Menko was played by stacking up a pile of caps face down, then throwing another cap at the stack. Like the traditional way, any caps that players flip, they got to keep. Years later, milk cartons replaced milk bottles and made it difficult to find caps to play Menko. However, the game remained so popular that the Halea Kaladere began to sell rolls of 500 caps for a few dollars. As the decades rolled on, the Halea Kaladeri introduced a new product that would turn the game into a worldwide phenomenon. It was a passion fruit orange guava drink, otherwise known as Pog. Decades after Halea Kaladeri expanded into selling caps for the Menko game, they began to sell a new juice made by Orchards Hawaii that would catapult the craze, Pog. It all began when Halea Kaladeri manager Charlie Nalipa went on a marketing spree for the new drink. He consulted with a Walt Disney co-designer to create a mascot called Poglodite and had the logo printed on windsurfing sails, race cars, and racing speedboats. 
Later, Charlie attended a trade fair in Honolulu and freely handed out the juice caps, calling them pods. It wasn't long until Kid snatched them up to play Menko and began calling the game Pogs instead. Around this time, Waialua Elementary School teacher Blossom Galbiso taught her fifth grade students how to play Pogs, hoping it would help them learn math. She also encouraged students to play outside of class since it didn't involve any type of potentially dangerous play, like dodgeball. Blossom's students embraced the game and ended up playing on their own. Soon after, many kids began playing Pogs daily since they were inexpensive, easy to play, and collectible like sports cards. And as the craze spread across the US, the Haleya Kaladere could no longer keep up with the demand. They had to hire more employees to handle, on average, a million requests each week. Meanwhile, other companies began making their own version of Pogs to get their own piece of the pie. This led to the Haleya Kaladere pricing their pogs from a few dollars for 500 to $25 a piece. Recognizing the potential for pogs to become a worldwide phenomenon, entrepreneur Alan Rapinski bought the trademark from Orchards Hawaii. Afterward, Alan founded the World Pog Federation with the goal of licensing products beyond caps, like game accessories and gear. The WPF then built on the pog craze by starting tournaments and decorating caps with snazzy graphics, often featuring relevant pop culture images. At some point, the WPF also released their own rule set for pogs, where each player stacks the same number of pogs face down and then plays rock, paper, scissors to determine who goes first. Then, the first player takes a heavier pog, known as a kini or a slammer, and throws it at the stack. Any pogs that land face up are theirs to keep. Afterward, the pogs are restacked for the next player and players take turns until all the pogs are flipped. The player with the most flipped pogs wins. In less than 18 months, the WPF's efforts had already begun to pay off. The company made more than 22 million in sales and even spurred an official fan club. Pogs became so popular that even toy companies struggled to find more. What they could have never predicted was that by the time they could get their hands on them, the future of Pogs would fall short. Coming from unexpected origins, Pog had made it big. Hundreds of millions of caps were starting to be sold worldwide, and some toy stores began to struggle to find more. And while kids simply saw Pogs as a different and fun game, companies, organizations, and political parties saw the tiny caps as a huge opportunity to promote their brand or message. The WPF even capitalized on the trend by introducing a device that would allow people to make Pogs using any image. Pog's effectiveness as marketing was thanks to their core design. Not only were they easy and cheap to manufacture, they were also easy to spread and understand. Of course, the success of Pogs and their ease to make led to a number of businesses selling their own versions as well. While the Pog trademark was owned by the WPF, other companies released their own versions. Copycats flooding the market wasn't the only obstacle that the WPF faced there was another threat emerging at schoolyards across the world. School officials found the game similar to gambling, since part of Pogs was playing for keeps. When you flipped one of the caps, it was yours after the game ended. Not helping matters was the fact that some students didn't understand that part of the game, leading to arguments and accusations of theft. And in some cases, some students were actually gambling or stealing others' Pogs. Soon after, schools across the world began banning pogs. And while some students protested and drew up petitions, others found new things to play like video and trading card games. Around this time, the WPF began to deal with declining sales, unsold merchandise, and having to cut its workforce. And not long after, the WPF almost went bankrupt from not setting aside enough cash to weather market downturns. The company's founder, Alan Rapinski then decided to sell his controlling interest to Pacific Capital Group in exchange for an investment. 
However, it wasn't enough to save the company or Pogs, which became more and more unpopular, until making a comeback in an unexpected way. Years after Pogs had seemingly come to an end, the tiny caps found its way to US military bases in Iraq and Afghanistan. At the time, the Army Air Force Exchange Services were looking for a form of currency to replace cash since metal coins were heavy and shipments to bases were limited to equipment and supplies. As a solution, the AAFES wound up creating their own version of POGS as gift certificates, which soldiers could use to buy items at AFIS stores or select retail and food chains. While the US military turned POGS into a commodity, others thought of ways to revive the game. First, a manufacturing and distribution company called Funrise purchased a POG license to create new products and then hosted tournaments to stir up buzz. Unfortunately, Funrise's plans failed and the company discontinued its products within a year. Over a decade later, a mobiles game developer called Compton Technology also purchased a license to create an augmented reality game for Apple and Android devices. The game was intended to be similar to Pokemon Go, where players could compete against others, scan real-world items to unlock pogs and new content, and participate in tournaments where winners would be granted upgrades. Unfortunately, the game never made it to App Store since Compton only managed to raise around 15,000 of its 50,000 goal on Indiegogo. Today, Pogs exists more as a pop culture oddity or a source of nostalgia rather than something that has a devoted following. Few Pogs have kept any value as collector items since there were so many made at the height of its craze. In fact, $15 is enough to buy dozens on eBay or Etsy. However, there are a few exceptions. Some of the branded Pogs have gone on sale for hundreds, thousands, or in one case, a million dollars. The Aphis Pogs, which were used for 20 years before being phased out, have also gone on sale for multiple times their original value. While Pogs has yet to be revived like other trends from the 90s, Dakji Chigi has become even more popular since the airing of Squid Game. In fact, it's been played in a real-life Squid Game event run by the famous YouTuber MrBeast. There are also plenty of tutorials online explaining how to make your own Dakji and play the game. As for the WPF, the company still exists and is active on social media, giving hope that a Pogs revival could still be in the cards. For more videos on major brands, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell so that you don't miss an episode.